Solving an archaeological mystery is usually just a matter of research and patience. If you work on the problem hard enough for long enough, the answer will eventually appear. There are exceptions to that rule, though, and those exceptions become archaeological mysteries, some of which may never be solved. We have some of the best and most puzzling of them in this video. Cogstones are ancient American artifacts whose original purpose remains unclear. These intriguing gear-like stones have been found throughout Southern California, with large deposits discovered along the Santa Ana River Valley. The stones, which range in size from 2 to 6 inches in diameter and up to 2 inches thick, are believed to have been made around 6,000 to 3,500 BCE. The cogstones exhibit various features such as cups, cusps, hemispherical grooves and dents, teeth around the edges, and cookie-cutter patterns. These features occur at precise and repeating intervals. About 15% of the stones have a single hole bored through the center. Interestingly, some stones have a perfectly square perforation in the middle, suggesting that their ancient creators may have had access to advanced technology. While the use of these stones is unknown, the lack of any wear pattern and the conjunction of certain specimens suggest that they may have served a ritual function. It's also unclear who produced these stone discs, but they are believed to be the invention of an ancient lost civilization that once lived in California. The cogstones bear a slight resemblance to the controversial prehistoric bronze gears discovered in Peru, but any connection between the two remains speculative. Bratle Bidole, or enigmatic tablets, are stone or terracotta tablets dating back to the Bronze Age, specifically between 2100 BCE and 1400 BCE. Approximately 300 examples of these artifacts have been found across Central, Eastern, and Central Southern Europe particularly south of Lake Garda in Italy. These tablets, ranging from 2 to 6 inches in diameter, are covered with incisions depicting geometric figures such as circles, lines, dots, and crosses. No two tablets are identical, although recurring traits are present. The function of these tablets and the meaning of the incisions remain unclear, despite ongoing efforts to decipher them. While some suggest the tablets could be ancient talismans, Others argue that the signs could be interpreted as a primitive form of alphabet. Some hypothesize that the tablets could be notes for good senses, while a more widely accepted theory suggests they might have served as ancient currency during an era dominated by bartering. An international project involving many Italian and foreign universities has been launched to study these tablets. Using innovative scanning and three-dimensional measurement techniques, Researchers are analyzing morphological correspondences between tablets found at great distances from each other. Maybe we'll finally get some answers that way. Now we're heading to India for a look at Krishna's Butterball in Mahabalapuram. It's not hard to see why this enormous rock was given its nickname. The boulder is said by local legends to be a chunk of butter that was stolen by the gods and then dropped from the heavens. The most baffling and visually stunning thing about Krishna's butterball is that it appears to be immune to the effects of gravity. It balances precariously on the slope of a hill, but it never moves. Scientists say that it's almost certainly a phenomenon known as a glacial erratic, which was stranded on the hill when the ice melted beneath it. But Hindu tradition says that when Krishna was a baby, he liked nothing better than stealing butter. And this is simply a big dollop that got away from him. There's an alternative name for the stone, which is Von Arai Kal, and translates into English as Sky God Stone. Local children slide down the hill and play on the sides of the boulder, and some even try to push it off. Thus far, nobody's been able to persuade it to move even so much as an inch. During excavations for London's new sewers in England, a medieval skeleton wearing a pair of thigh-high leather boots was discovered at the Chambers Wharf site in Bermondsey. The skeleton, believed to be from the late 15th century, was found face down in the mud, leading archaeologists to speculate that the man may have died while working near the river and was quickly covered by mud after falling or drowning. The boots, which were an expensive item typically passed on to others rather than discarded after death, extended to the thigh, 
suggesting they served as waiters rather than any fashion-related purpose. This indicates that the man could have been a fisherman, mudlark, or sailor. The man, likely under 35, had lived a hard life, suffering from osteoarthritis. Deep grooves found on his teeth could have been caused by a repetitive action such as passing rope between them, a common practice among fishermen. The discovery made during work on the 15-mile Thames Tideway Tunnel is considered a rare and fascinating find by Mola Headland Infrastructure, the consortium carrying out the excavations. It's likely that more will be found as this project continues. In Varanasi, India, the demolition of buildings for the Kashi Vishwanath Temple Corridor project has led to the discovery of numerous ancient temples full of architectural marvels. The structures are so numerous that the detailed project report for the project now includes a decision to develop the corridor area as a complex of ancient temples in order to preserve them. The demolition process has revealed a temple from the Samudragupta era, which had been completely hidden by walls to construct a house with a toilet on top near Mani Karnika Ghat. In total, 43 structures, including ancient temples, libraries, and buildings of architectural importance have been identified for preservation during demolition. The government sanctioned an amount equivalent to approximately $80 million for the project in December 2017. The project aims to provide easy accessibility to the Kashi Vishwanath Temple from the banks of the Ganges River and will include facilities such as a main reception, police security system, and ticket counters for arty and prosid bookings. Given what's been discovered, it might make sense to add a museum so people can find out more about the history that's been uncovered. A mass grave containing the remains of approximately 450 individuals suspected by their peers of being vampires has been unearthed in the village of Lazino, Poland. The burial site, discovered by road workers near a 19th century cemetery, reveals a macabre practice that was once used in the region to prevent the undead from rising. Each body in the grave was decapitated, with the skull placed between the legs and a coin inserted in the mouth. Archaeologist Meshid Stromsky explains that these actions were taken by the living in response to local belief in vampires. Decapitation was believed to stop the dead from returning, while the coin in the mouth was thought to negate the vampire's curse. Although the specifics of the supposed curse have been lost to time, additional rituals such as placing bricks near the bodies were employed as spiritual barriers to confine the undead to their graves. While it's tempting to believe that such superstitions were stamped out centuries ago, this is compelling evidence that belief in the walking undead was still prevalent in some parts of Europe as recently as 200 years ago. Our next set of artifacts is known as the Tucson Artifacts because they were found close to Tucson, Arizona in 1924. They're also variously known as the Silver Bell Road Artifacts and the Tucson Crosses. Whatever name you want to call them, they're an ancient metal mystery. The treasure trove of 31 artifacts was discovered by Charles E. Manier while out walking and comprises Christian-style crosses, metal artifacts shaped like short swords, and a few other objects which might be religious in nature. The strangest thing about the entire collection is the presence of a dinosaur engraved on the blade of one of the swords. Given that the supposed date of origin for the Tucson artifacts is the 8th century, the presence of a dinosaur design ought to be impossible. Between the dinosaur and the poor quality of the Latin inscriptions on some of the other artifacts, it's no wonder that many historians have written the discovery off as a hoax. To those who still believe in their veracity, though, the Tucson artifacts are evidence of Judeo-Christian settlers arriving in Arizona 1,200 years ago. Why those settlers would know about dinosaurs is something that even the fringe theorists can't explain. In a small Welsh village, archaeologists Nicky Vusden and Roderick Bale stumbled upon a rock with strange carvings by a stream during an evening stroll in early 2017. This rock turned out to be the long-lost medieval Cillian Three Stone. Thought to be an ecclesiastic monument possibly used as a boundary or grave marker, the stone dating back to the 9th or 10th century features a linear Latin cross within a lozenge-shaped ring. 
This enigmatic stone is one of 28 missing early Christian monuments in the southwest Wales area, although this particular stone is obviously no longer missing. It's one of three known stones in Wales that have the same cross and lozenge design. The stone has been missing for centuries, with the only record being a plaster cast commissioned by the National Museum of Wales in 1914. It's now on display at St. Sullivan's Church, generating local interest and prompting speculation about what other historical artifacts might be found in the area. The village of Sillian dates back to the 5th or 6th century and was once a place of significant early Christian ecclesiastical activity. Perhaps the remaining stones are still within its borders. The Four Well at Edinburgh Castle, a mysterious and ancient structure, has been part of the city's architectural fabric for hundreds of years. The well, which bores down through the castle rock to a depth of 110 feet, has existed since the time of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. In fact, it was Robert the Bruce's troops who blocked the well in 1313 to prevent it from being used against them. The well was brought back into use after 1313, but was choked with debris again during the siege of 1573. It was cleaned out and extended in 1574 to accommodate the new Half Moon Battery defense system. The well, which was a prime source of drinking water for those in the castle, was incorporated into the ruins of David's Tower that fell during the 1573 siege. In 1912, a survey of the well was conducted by William Thomas Oldrive, architect for Scotland, with the Office of Works. He found many objects of interest, including cannonballs, artillery fragments, a historic brass uniform button, and a halfpenny coin minted in 1795. A full digital survey of the well was completed by Historic Environment Scotland in 2018, revealing modern coins and, bizarrely, a plastic toy skeleton. Let's talk about ancient Egyptian mysteries. In fact, let's talk about one of the biggest ones. There's a hatch or a hole on the top of the head of the Sphinx and nobody wants to tell the world where it leads to. In fact, very few archaeologists want to talk about the idea that there are rooms inside the Sphinx at all. The hole can clearly be seen in old pictures of the sculpture, but appears to have been filled in more recently. It's likely that very few people knew it was there at all until aerial photography became possible. Even now, it's illegal to photograph the Giza Plateau from above, which is a sure sign that there's something there that authorities don't want people to see. Researcher Robert Scoach claims to have seismic data that clearly indicates the existence of hollow chambers inside the Sphinx and an underground tunnel that leads from the Sphinx to the Great Pyramid. Zahi Hawass has even produced a video that appears to show him accessing the chambers through a hatch and discovering a sarcophagus, although his testimony is disputed and he now refuses to discuss his video. What's really inside the Sphinx? And why aren't we allowed to know? More than 300 water glyphs have been charted in northern Arizona, southern Utah, and Nevada in the USA, and their origins and meaning remain unknown. The glyphs consist of circle or ellipse shapes bisected by a straight line and are thought to be at least 2,000 years old, though they could be older. Some researchers suggest that the ancestral Puebloans may have created the glyphs as directional signs to locate water sources, while others propose that they were astronomical markers for the Anasazi civilization. The glyphs are about 50 inches long by 25 inches wide, with grooves carved half an inch to an inch deep, and variations in the shape of the circles may convey meaning. The Anasazi were a sophisticated civilization that studied the stars and built great cities among sandstone cliffs. And the most common suggestion about the Anasazi origin theory is that the glyphs were used as their solstice markers or ancient calendars. Other theories suggest that the glyphs were used to trap birds, played an important role in religious events, or may have even been made by illiterate Spanish immigrants. Despite these speculations, further scientific studies are needed to unravel the secrets of these enigmas. The Egyptians were ahead of all their contemporaries when it came to arts and crafts. To prove it, here are 27 ancient regal statues of Sekhmet, the lion-faced ancient Egyptian goddess of war. 
The discoveries were made at the site of the temple of Amenhotep III on the west bank of Luxor. Each of the statues is crafted from black granite. This is difficult material to work with and must have been chosen with a specific reason in mind. Perhaps the reason was durability. It was a good choice if so because the statues are still with us thousands of years later. Most of the sculptures are more than six feet tall, although there are a few smaller ones that show the goddess sitting on a throne holding the Egyptian symbol of life in her left hand. The temple is an enormous site, spanning almost four million square feet. To put that in context, it's as big as 65 American football fields. Archaeologists think it was mostly destroyed by an earthquake about 3,200 years ago. There's still plenty more excavation work to do at the temple, so more statues and other artifacts may yet be unearthed. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.